What is the strangest event you have seen or been a part of? Didn't happen to me but my girlfriend's neighbor's house went up in flames but when the fire truck came, it never stopped. It drove straight through the house and completely destroyed everything. Brakes just didn't work at the wrong time. Best way to fight fire, divide and conquer. Car slams on its brakes on a busy four lane road. A woman jumps out and reaches into her back seat, grabs what looks like a giant fake sunflower plant and swings it around her head. It seems like for a minute but perhaps it was only 30 seconds. She throws the sunflower back in and jumps back in the car and speeds off. Me and 4 other people just stood there in disbelief at the entire sight. Just WTF. For a second she thought she had invented the flower copter. I can imagine her disappointment as she got back into her car again, with a slightly torn imagination. I was in Rome walking down one of the main tourist streets. Lots of high-end fashion stores. Mid-July. Lots of people and right in the middle of this street there's a big scaffolding erected against the side of one of the stores. As me and my family walk under the scaffold there's a big crowd of people ahead of us so the pace is pretty slow. Out of nothing the people ahead of us start coughing. Nothing noticeable at first but then it's louder and it's spreading further back. My brother is a little bit ahead of me and he's coughing too. I can suddenly feel dust or smoke or something obstructing my airway and I can barely breathe. The street looks fine. No building dust or smog or car exhausts but around 30 people are coughing like we're in a burning building and pushing each other to get out onto the street. The panic was huge, I couldn't stop coughing and all I can think of is getting me and my family the heck out of there. People are shoving and shouting and I can feel the crowd swelling against my back. And then we make it onto the street and it stops. All 30 or so of us just stood on the street coughing and spluttering and trying to catch our breath in the midday sun. And that was it. After about a minute we all felt fine and everybody walked away in different directions. No lasting effects. Nothing. There was probably a really simple explanation but it was one of the weirdest experiences I've had. Dude, that was one final twist away from being the start of a fringe episode. 5th grade. I forgot the details because it was long ago and it was stupid kid drama. But basically my entire gym class hated my gym teachers. One day, some kid confronts one of the teachers. An actual fight breaks out between the two of them. The rest of the class just goes apeshit. Some join in on the fighting. So in the matter of seconds it's a bunch of 10 11 year olds fighting two screaming adult females. And the rest of class takes it outside to the playground. Once outside, another group of students try to break some of the playing equipment, but everybody else for some unknown reason decided that marching around the perimeter of the playground while chanting was the best course of action. I just chilled out on top of the jungle gym outside while this was happening since I didn't want to get in trouble. So basically, inside the gym you have a group of students wailing on two teachers for some period of time. And outside a bunch of kids are marching in circles acting like they are doing some kind of freedom march. Once the dust settled, every student was required to go to a counseling session. And that was the end of that. I don't remember what happened to the teachers or the actual class after that. This happened back in the 1999 to 2000 school year at Meadow Creek Elementary in GAF. By some giant coincidence, anybody who went there and sees this post can confirm. TL. DR. Version. Bunch of 5th graders revolt against gym teachers and ends up doing a freedom march on the playground. Ah see the mistake they made was not seizing the armory. I was driving down the highway, just minding my own business. All of the sudden I see a car standing on the emergency lane. The driver, a woman in her 40s or 50s, is standing behind the barrier, passionately playing an accordion and singing. There was no traffic jam or anything. Guess she just suddenly felt like she wanted to make some music. On the highway. Alone. Sounds like you weren't minding your own business at all you goddamn accordion ver. My friend invited me to a party once. It was a party being held by some social network site. Can't remember the name of it. Only certain members got invited. Mainly people who had helped contribute to the site and a big part of the community. They each received odd packages filled with items such as marshmallows and other things. And a personalized invitation. Also, each member could bring one guest. I was a guest. 
Wettel traveled down to some warehouse in the middle of London and there is a massive queue, and being handed drinks by people who seem to work there. Anyway, once I get inside I can only describe this as the strangest, most absurd party I have ever been to. And it was awesome. At the entrance a dwarf leads you through a large wardrobe of coats, so you can't see crap, and you eventually enter a jungle with a massive tree with a treehouse in the middle. Several free bars, you just had to jump on for a bit and help serve people, a hot tub, and random caravans. Walk through and we found several different rooms, such as a cinema, slaughterhouse, granny flat, the white room, a room fully padded out and filled with huge white cushions, and loads more I can't remember. I met some interesting people, got drunk, had a nap in treehouse and woke up with another guy I had met early curled up next to me, and the rest of the room chatting while two girls get it on in the middle. We left at about 11 in the morning, as did many others about that time, but apparently the party went on for another couple days. It was surreal, but incredible at the same time. You're referring to the annual Fassa Putty party. I was there too. I was not the man curled up next to you. I believe the host is now dead and the parties are no more. They were great parties. I was paying off a bushel of parking tickets when I was approached by a man dressed in a three-piece suit. He asked offered me $100 to be a witness for his wedding being that his best man wasn't going to be able to make it. I said frick yeah. Walk into the room and it was myself, a judge and two dudes. Was I surprised? Yes. I thought the best man was running late. Again? Wrong. Watch two dudes get married. Didn't bother me. Even made money. Went to bar afterwards to celebrate with them. Coolest dudes I have ever met. Got another parking ticket. Still friends today. Drove past two people frantically freaking in a white fiesta or panda or something. On the hard shoulder of the M25 anti-clockwise between junction 11 and 10. In the middle of rush hour. I made a fake press badge and went to a Nazi rally as a press photographer. That was fun. Pretty disorganized and indisciplined for people trying to emulate the most ruthlessly organized military political entity in modern history. That's because they're just a bunch of drunk buttholes. Okay, finally a chance to share this one. I was in South Africa and planned to go out with a bunch of friends for someone's birthday. When we got to the restaurant, they told us there was a wait of like 20 minutes. But since the place was really small and we were a large group they told us to go wait in the bar next door. Sure, no problem, we'll grab a drink and then head over. So we go to the next door over and immediately think there must have been a mistake. The door seems to lead to nothing but a long, dark, narrow alley with a massive set of stairs at the end. No way the bar's up there. We go back and double check, but the hostess insists, yep, the bar's up those stairs. So we head over and start climbing. The stairs are extremely steep and very narrow, and there's mysterious water dripping down the sides of the alley. We're all getting a pretty weird vibe, but we continue on anyways. Eventually the stairs come up to a short hallway, and at the end of it is a door which looks like it leads to someone's house. It's the only way out of the hallway, though. So we open it and walk in. It was the most surreal experience of my life. It was like walking into a ritual worship of Britney Spears. There was a DJ at the front projecting the music video to hit me baby one more time onto the wall for a crowd of people all dancing along like it was 1999. The room was probably 85% male and many of them had Britney Spears masks on their faces so we didn't even know what people really looked like. After a few solid minutes of gaping in shock, my friends and I turned and hightailed it out of there. The weird thing was a few people arrived late to the restaurant, so obviously we shared the story and promised we'd take them up afterwards. So when the meal ended we climbed the long, narrow stairs again, and walked into, nothing. It was a completely regular bar. No traces of Britney anywhere. It was the first year in college and I joined this club called the Chocolate Club and I had no idea what it was. The first session, there were like 8 people plus the leader, and the leader led us to a graveyard and told us to stand in a circle facing inwards. He then proceeded to hand us each a chocolate ball and told us that we had to hold it in a specific way with only our middle finger and our thumb. He then mumbled some random words and then signaled us to eat it and so we did. Never went back again. So basically, you got free chocolate. I like this club. About 12 years ago, 
I was friends with a girl who worked in a professional dungeon, like a brothel, but for BDSM instead of sex. I was visiting her one day between sessions, and she got called to work early. I stuck around in the break room, and after about 20 minutes, the owner walked in and asked if I could help them out. Seems my friend's clients wanted an audience. I'm a pretty big kinkster myself, so I said sure. Walked into one of the lounge areas with said owner, and plonked down in a chair. Down the stairs comes my friend, who's grinning ear to ear, followed by her client. He was about 40, short, dressed in a blue satin dress with white lace and massive petticoats, with a crinkly nappy on underneath, and was wearing a curly haired wig with a large bow. At my friend's urging, he proceeded to do a little dance routine while singing the good ship lollipop. Afterwards we applauded and congratulated him on a wonderful show. I can never hear that song now without remembering that day. While smoking on the balcony of my apartment, I was watching a cat staring into the night sky while sitting on a brick fence for a good 10 minutes. Then I watch as another cat appears out of nowhere walking towards the first cat and they proceed to have cat sex. It was really weird, as if they had planned to meet there or something. This literally happened 5 minutes ago. I think a brick fence is called a wall. Alright so when I was 16 my family along with my best friend's family, we were best friends since preschool, went on a carnival cruise together. It was a 7 day with our itinerary starting in FL and going to the Cayman Islands, Honduras, Belize, then Kazumal. Well at our first stop in the Cayman Islands we were getting ready to depart then the captain came over the intercom looking for a family that apparently never showed up. They never got back on the boat and they never met up with us at another stop. Then myself along with my best friend and his older brother were pulled out of our rooms the next night at around 3am to sit in ship jail while we were questioned about a girl who went missing on the ship because she had been seen entering my room. I had my own balcony room so we threw a small party in the room. Well after hours of questioning they started searching rooms and found her in an older man's room drugged and raped. Went pretty eventless after that until we were going back to Florida when, with extremely drunken eyes, we spotted a blue speck in the distance. We tell a ship employee and they make a phone call. After about 10 minutes we started floating towards the speck. Once we got close enough the ship operator turned off the engines and we were standing on my balcony looking down at a ship full of Cuban refugees. Being Hispanic I could hear what they were saying. We were at 15 miles from port and they had been on the water for over a week. It was 4 men and a pregnant woman. We threw water bottles because they were out of water. They were shouting phone numbers to I guess call their loved ones and then, the sadness hit. They came over the intercom and said that we would have to wait there until coast guard showed up. When the coast guard showed up the men fought and resisted for a few minutes but eventually with the urging of the ship passengers they gave in. It was a surreal moment for me. TL. DR. Cruises can be freaking intense. I go to anime conventions, but since there aren't men long haired, bearded anime characters, I cosplay as Jesus. Someone who's never been to a con might be kind of surprised at how many black people go to. Maybe I was just prejudiced, but I was expecting all white people. Anyway, one time a whole huge family of black people, 10 to 15 people, ran up and crowded around me and all started singing church songs while clapping, dancing, stomping, shouting amen, and generally acting like they were feeling the holy spirit inside them. I've never been so confused about how to react in my life, eventually I just collapsed laughing. I just googled anime Jesus, and apparently there's a show about Jesus and Buddha as roommates in Tokyo. I was at a party with a bunch of friends. There was a girl who was feeling ill so we went upstairs to help her relax. Long story short, it turned into an exorcism and two big guys were needed to prevent her from hurting herself and even they had trouble with it. My sister and I were driving to Clearwater FL from St. Pete one day and traffic on 19 is always crap with the stoplights. Well the car to ahead of us kind of throw drops this bundle on the ground. Well the woman in the car in front of us gets out and picks it up. It's a freaking baby. The people in the car that dropped it jump out and take it back. And this is right when the light had changed so basically jump in the car and drive off. It made the local news from what I remember. I remember thinking if I were that woman they would have needed an act of god to get the baby out of my arms. You just threw IT out of your car. 
I was in a subway in this tall, lanky black man who was obviously on drugs dances through the doors yelling I'm the cookie monster repeatedly until the people behind the counter gave him a cookie. As he was walking out he throws his cookie at my head and gets about 2 feet away from my face and says you gotta have a daily dose of cookies to be a cookie monster like me and then danced out of the door. I think he just passed the torch, cookie, to you, you know what must be done. I wouldn't necessarily label it strange, but I had never seen it happen before. I was driving home from class and get to an intersection where everyone was slowing down for seemingly no reason. As I got closer I noticed two cars had stopped, both driver side doors were open and the men driving those cars were fist fighting in the middle of the street, zero context, but I guessed road rage, chuckled, and continued home. The chili that night was awesome. Tell me more about this chili. A friend and I were hanging out at the mall when suddenly a dude dressed like Gandalf the Grey appeared out of nowhere and said, we must take the ring to Mordor Welp. Look, I'm a huge Tolkien fan. I love random crap. So I looked at my friend. She nodded. We went with Gandalf. We traipsed through the mall with him, slowly gathering six more people who were willing to play along. Gandalf assigned each of us a name matching the members of the fellowship. I was Pippin, my friend was Merry, eventually Gandalf leads us to a conference room in a building next to the mall, there are pillows, blankets, popcorn and sodas, we watch all three of the LOTR movies together back to back, all of us are giggling and laughing and having a great time, at the end of it, Gandalf reveals he's conducting a social experiment for his class, we fill out a small survey and we go on our ways, still friends with everyone in our fellowship. I am more amazed by the fact that you all had 9 hours of time to drop everything and watch all 3 movies, than anything else. When I was in high school my step cousin's grandmother passed, in Mexico, and we went to her funeral. She lived on the border in Brownsville, Texas across from Matamoros. She lived most of her life in that city but spent her last few years in the US. Of course, she wanted to be buried in Mexico, with her son who passed when he was young. I can't remember why he died but he was buried in a small, very secluded graveyard that was rarely in use. In order to gain access to his gravesite, my uncle had to pay the family that now owned the land a small fee. Being that it wasn't an active graveyard we had to dig the plot ourselves. In August, in Mexico. Now if it was just the act of digging a hole, no big deal but she wanted to be buried with her son, not beside, with. After 4 hours we, about 10 various family members, were 4 featuring down when we started finding pieces of wood. Naturally, the casket was just a few splinters and chunks after all these years, I believe he passed in the 50s. The surreal part was getting to the skeleton, everything was gone flesh and clothing wise, except for his socks polyester, I think. We then placed all of the bones, and socks, inside an infant casket and delivered it to the funeral home 10 minutes before services were to start. When we returned to the grave it was a normal Mexican funeral and the smaller casket was placed on top of the abulatus casket. It was nice seeing everyone in attendance take a turn returning the earth to the hole. When we were done, people said their prayers and then everyone got drunk. Also, when she died in Brownsville, in order to get her to Mexico she was propped in the back seat and driven to the funeral. At the border, they said she was sleeping. These just keep getting better the farther down you go. When I was maybe 13 or 14, my friend and I were walking down a street not too far from my house. It was a fairly long street and took a good 10 minutes to walk from one end to the other. When we were about halfway I started to hear a quiet hum like that of a motor. It gradually got louder and I turned to my friend and he looked at me like he heard it just as confused. We looked around and turned around to see in the distance the outline of an obese man riding one of those small crotch rocket motorbikes. The really small ones right down the sidewalk. We moved over onto the grass to let him pass. As he got closer and zoomed past us pretty fast he was wearing a red scarf and aviator jacket, goggles, and a pilot cap. One of the World War II skull caps. He had the most determined look like he was on a mission and the scarf fluttered in the wind as he zoomed past. A cloud of dust kicked up too. I've got no idea who this man was but I like to believe he was on a serious mission to save an ancient relic or something. If you're reading this, may God speed be with you. Through a house party in high school. 
got out of hand as these things do. Couple extra hundred people showed up. Large fight riot ensued and spilled onto the front lawn and into my neighbor's yard. My neighbor was a sensei, owned a dojo and generally kicked butt. He emerged from his house and during the brawl wearing a G and proceeded to break his fence in half with his hands presumably as a warning shot. When that didn't work he just started kicking kid butt, laying out whoever came near the perimeter of his property. It was straight out of a kung fu movie. Friends helped me throw the remaining people out of my house as I locked the place down and prepared to abandon house. With police lights in the distance and ready to make a run for it the last thing I remember seeing is the sensei taking on a fat kid in a cast on swinging his crutch around in the air at him. It was a heck of a party. TL. DR. House party. Big fight. Steven Seagalish neighbor regulates. I went to a religious Shrek service dedicated to the great Ogre Lord above us all. The sermon was pretty good, but the songs were crap. We are all onions may Shrek peel back the layers. I watched my neighbor's house burn down. It was surreal. There is no way to describe the magnitude of emotions and shock of seeing something there for 7 years and gone in 2 hours. I can still feel the heat when I close my eyes. It felt like you had a blow dryer in your face even though we were sitting on our deck 100 feet away. But I've seen fires on TV. It was nothing like that other than looks. I felt terrible for the family, but from a clinical standpoint, seeing that big of a fire in real life was awe inspiring. It felt so powerful. An immense power of destruction. It was a very bittersweet experience. Pulled up behind a car with the license plate unarmed at a drive through ATM. Foot comes out the driver's side window with ATM card held between toes. Foot proceeds to work the touch screen and enter a track the card, then just drives away. Da fuck. I saw a blind guy holding onto the back of another blind guy who was leading him around. I saw the blind leading the blind. I saw a man commit suicide. I was driving on a highway in Texas late at night and a man ran across the highway and jumped in front of the car that was next to me. It haunted me for months. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.